This is Reasonable Doubt with your hosts, Mark Garrigus and Adam Carolla. Yeah, get it on. Got to get on. No choice. We're going to mandate. Get on. Welcome to the best hour or so in the universe. It's Reasonable Doubt. We should change the name to Mark's Heart Out. I think that would be a more fitting Lately. name for this show. <laughs> Welcome back to Mark's Heart Out. Where? Oh, Mark's gone. All right, I'll take it from here. So a uh, lot to cover in a short period of time because Mark's got a heart out. I can see I can see his tennis instructor pacing in the background. Mark, you're at your home office. I am. I am. I've been on I've been on Zooms all morning, both defending lawyers, defending other clients. It's been something this morning. I can't tell you. Did Jake kick you out of the kitchen? Why? Why the change of venue? Well, I was in the kitchen. I go back and forth. You know, they uh, they kick me out of the various rooms. Today, today I'm here. I insisted that I get to go back because I wanted the Statue of Liberty behind me, you know, holding up freedom. Because I watch, I, I saw something last night. I was going to call you. And then I said, no, because then that would ruin the what I enjoy more than anything else. You enjoy when I have a heart out because you then get to tease the shit out of me. I enjoy when I watch your face, when you watch something that that tickles you. So I sent this over to Gary, and I want to watch your face as you watch this. All right. I don't know what it is, but Gary's going to hit I play. I just live in Shanghai now. It's, it's almost getting worse that in some apartment buildings, if one person tests positive for COVID, the whole building has to go into quarantine or the whole floor. I'm on my neighborhood group chat still, and I'm seeing them as they're expressing their frustration. This is another new policy that has come into effect. It's not necessarily been written, but this is certainly what's being carried out. Yeah, if your neighbor gets it, and even if that neighbor is perhaps three floors up at this point. And has not left their apartment in, not in, left their in apartment two months. In, in, yeah, 60 plus days now. The entire building is being taken to. And, and when you say taken to, I mean, they are literally kicking down the doors. Take a look at this video yeah. of, of them coming for one family. <laughs> Jesus. Getting right in there. I mean, it's been likened to a scene out of The Shining. I mean, this is like in those zombie films. I mean, yeah. your, your exit, it, that whole city is truly locked down. What's interesting is you don't hear it here, but the translation of what this officer says is roughly, this is not America. You can't have it the way you want. Well, okay. So, I, you know, what Anderson <laughs> Cooper is distraught over, he was not he's, so distraught. Over a version of that in this country that was, you know, what we did is 78% of what they're doing. So he's. I would venture to say, yes. I'm going to interrupt. Gary, do you have a picture of the Burbank, city of Burbank, responding to Tin Horn Flats? Yes, give me 10 seconds. So Anders, okay. Anderson was did not stand behind your client Tinhorn Flats. And Anderson was the guy who was appalled that people were walking on the beach alone at Daytona Beach several months ago or a year and a half ago. So Anderson, you should be cheering this on because it's just a slightly higher octane version of what you've been cheering on for the last two years in this country. And by the way, I just got done doing a whole long article uh, the New York Times wrote, of all places, on just how destructive school lockdowns were and how much further black and brown kids fell behind after their schools were closed down. I didn't hear word one out of Anderson Cooper when they were closing down all the schools and sending the poor black and brown kids to fall even further behind their white and Asian counterparts. Would somebody please explain to me why the how the it is the death of irony is my is is my immediate reaction. How is it that you can put a fence around Tin Horn Flats like this, or and you're not appalled, or by but kicking in the door you are appalled, and then if Gary finds the SWAT team coming in, um, then I I I I would I would say it's of the same, if not worse, here. And nobody reacted with the clutching of the pearls and the CNN correspondent 
I don't even know who that guy is, but maybe he wasn't old enough to remember three years ago. But the, we were doing the same, if not worse. And by, we modeled after China, as I remember. Yeah, and it was cheered on by CNN and the LA Times and the New York Times and all the major media legacy outlets, which is insane. And, you know, as I always say, um, it's sort of like their approach to socialism. Like, well, we're not saying we need to go full, you know, it's like Bernie Sanders is like, I don't want to go Venezuelan socialism. I want to go a kind of a socialism that's a little lighter version of socialism. How about socialism is bad and it doesn't work and it's never worked and we don't even get anything close to a government that resembles socialism. This is the same thing. What China's doing is horrible. What Burbank did that's a version of what China did, but I don't have any opinions on it because I think that's my side doing it, so I'm going to root them on. But, you know, it reminds me. When I was in, um, when I was taking anthropology in college, I had a professor, Wyatt McGaffey, who was brilliant at kind of displaying for you the stark contrasts of how you view the world. He would have us look at things from in the Congo. He was an expert in the Congo. And we would, you know, as white kids going to a, uh, to a school, a Quaker school in Philadelphia, we would look at these things and think how trite and how, you know, kind of patronizing, but he would then, he was a master of just turning it around and pointing out the, that we're doing the exact same thing. It is just a matter of your perspective. This was exactly that in a way that was just awful because the, the you know, CNN and the and their, their reporting of COVID, the, they became cheerleaders. And the, the switch on a dime, which you and I have chronicled, uh, is amazing. And how they can do it without... I saw something the other day where somebody said, at least if you press pause and say, yeah, that was then, um, you know, the Scalia line, that was then, this is now, I've changed my mind, you know, that you can be honest about it. I would give some kind of credence to it. But this is unbelievable to me. This just is, how do you just on a dime turn around and say, no, it's, uh, you know, this is abhorrent when it's in China, but we were we were a version of the same thing. It's like I said in the New York Times article out a couple of days ago, talking about how much damage school choice, or I should say school lockdowns and closures cost. They're against school choice, by the way. And they're for the little brown kids and the little black kids and the things that could help them would be school choice and vouchers. But they're against all that. But they were appalled to find out just how much damage the lockdowns caused. And my point was, where were you assholes two years ago when they were locking down all the schools? What did you have to say about it? Why were you cheering it on? Who is culpable for this damage? There you go. Now, if you took police off and you just photoshopped in whatever the Chinese equivalent is and said, this is what they're doing, they're taking businesses, things of that, wouldn't, I mean, wouldn't that change your perspective on just how absurd the, these two things are side by side? We're looking at a picture of the SWAT team in Burbank uh, outside running on the running boards, full tactical gear, guns, radios, and every everything they could strap onto their body, helmets, and they're all riding on the outside of a black SUV on their way to Tin Horn Flats to... <laughs> Uh, educate so, the owners to enforce, outdoor, to enforce outdoor dining prohibition, which is demonstrably was demonstrably false before, during and after. Well, you know, it's funny. People always do this thing where they go, Adam, why are you causing shit with the L.A. teachers unions? Why are you sending those tweets out? Uh, why did you take Sonny to Tin Horn Flats when they out, outlawed dining? Why are you getting involved with this? And I go, look. You assholes are the same people that are constantly trying to revise history and put yourself into these times in history when you were marching with Martin Luther King and you were in front of the courthouse that was um, that didn't want the kid, uh, the black students let into the schools in Alabama. You're constantly trying to put yourself into that picture. Um, I want to put myself into this picture. 
when we when when a year and a half ago, when I'm battling with the L.A. Unified School District and calling them pussies and cowards and telling them to get back and do their fucking job. I want that to live on. I want that. I want to commemorate that for then when the New York Times article comes out 10 minutes ago and says, how, here's how much damage you guys cause. I can then go refer to my tweets and see what side of history I was on. And when the government shuts down Tin Horn Flats, please refer to the footage of me on TMZ with Sonny walking into Tin Horn Flats and spending money to get a uh, nachos and a burger. I want that to be on my record, my permanent record. And when I send a tweet out that says this thing is killing old people and sick people and the rest of you pussies got played, I don't take it off. I want it there. I want it memorialized. Well, You'll remember, you and I, because it was a client of mine, so we talked about it. We talked about Ray Fesquith, who was a uh, was a legendary teacher in LAUSD and was sent to teacher jail. This is before COVID. And we were talking about how ridiculous the LAUSD is back then with teacher jail, with barbed wire. They would send teachers and have them sit there all day uh, for various transgressions that they had ginned up in the LAUSD. COVID comes along, and they you know, the same lunacy that was there prior to COVID just gets expanded and kind of amplified or uh, and set on fire, if you will. And then people, and I think to your point, People have no memory because that to to have that piece that we started off with on CNN showing China and clutching your pearls as they're showing what's happening in China and not saying, wow, maybe we lost our minds, too, or not referring to, well, at least we figured it out or pause. I was wrong. You don't you don't have to you don't have to go back two years ago for that. You can go back 10 minutes ago to Canada. These same assholes were cheering on Trudeau when he was locking down Canada, when he was trying to, you know, cancel the GoFundMe uh, websites for the truckers. These people were all pro Trudeau when he was doing, you know, it's basically what Gavin Newsom did was a, seven what trudeau did was a nine and what china did was a 10 so why when you're appalled at what china did i'll 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 grant you as a 10 out of 10 in the civil liberties department why are you cheering on trudeau who was doing an eight and a half or a nine of the same fucking version of what china's doing and gavin newsom who was doing a basically seven to seven point three of what china is doing and then why were you attacking ron DeSantis in florida who said open the schools and open the society so which is it well and how about if you're the la times i think i said this to you gary if i didn't they're now openly speculating Gavin Newsom. This is this is the insanity, the the asylum we live in. That they're speculating he's twenty twenty four as a Democratic presidential contender because he criticized Nancy Pelosi um, uh, in terms of strategy. That that's that's who you want. You know, it isn't good enough that he has completely mismanaged California. We're now going to go take it national. And at the same time, let's make sure that we do not endorse um, Rick Caruso, but we're going to endorse Karen Bass because and we're going to take pot shots at Caruso at every chance we get, because God forbid that we get somebody who's actually accomplished something to try to deal with it. Mind you, I was downtown yesterday um, trying to get into my own building at the Engine Company 28 with my my pregnant daughter, where there's a guy driving up before I even noticed Teddy spotted it with his bicycle, who then slams the uh, the bike onto the car three times as we're sitting in it. I jump out. You'll love this. Whoever the guy was in the alley was a reasonable doubt listener who was just sitting there. He goes, let's go. And he yells at me. Let's go get him. Let's beat him back 
to sanity. <laughs> he kind of followed me as we went looking for this guy, but he'd already taken off on his bicycle after using it to beat the car. But that's let's let's bring more of what our friendly neighborhood entrenched politicians have brought us: the destruction of of our city as we know it. Well, in shifting gears, and I'm going to hit a spot here because we're a little tight on time today. Uh, I know there was some uh, Project Veritas news that uh, had been forwarded along to you. And uh, there's some interesting stuff. In, and we've talked to Michael O'Keefe about this, or James O'Keefe, sorry, about this. But uh, there's some really interesting stuff coming out. And it's really just more government overreach and weaponizing of, of the DOJ. So we'll get into that along with some stuff that you may not know, Mark, about that case. First, I'll tell you about uh, Audible. 2022 is all about making positive change. Audible, your destination for wellness, inspiration, to create new goals, unwind, or simply be entertained. Enjoy all your audio entertainment in one app. You'll always find the best of what you love or something new to discover as well. Um, I got to tell you, Mark walks around the neighborhood. I walk around the neighborhood. We always put the earbuds on and we're always listening to one of the offerings on Audible. Uh, an Audible member, as an Audible member, you can choose a, one title a month and you can keep it from the keep it from the entire catalog, including the latest bestsellers and new releases as well. New members can try Audible for free for 30 days. Visit Audible. Dot com, I should say audible.co slash rd. That's audible.co slash rd. Or text rd to 500 500. That's audible.co slash rd. All right. So uh, the James hey, O'Keefe thing. I'm unaware of, yes? Yeah, well, there there was a whistleblower inside, I think it was the FBI, Gary, who came forward with some documents and talked to James about uh, what he saw going on inside the FBI, essentially targeting Project Veritas. Project Veritas, we've talked to James before. They go under, they do investigative stuff, they wire up people and they do hidden cameras and they get people saying things are a little bit different than what they say when there's a microphone in front of them that they can see. Um, he, there was an FBI guy who was pretty well along, pretty well entrenched in the FBI, still an employee of the FBI, uh, far enough up the food chain where he had access to some sensitive documents. And uh, he sat down with James. And I think, I think Gary has that for about two minutes. So you've been a special agent for a number of years. Correct. Special agent with the FBI. That's correct. And you're still being paid for that role. Yes. There's a number of very troubling things that are happening within the FBI. What brought you to Project Veritas? Project Veritas appears to be a victim of political undertakings, which is where this, this agency has gone. You came across some information. The file that you're talking about is background on the the Project Veritas investigation the, the, that resulted in the search warrant at your premises. We don't see a lot of investigations into news organizations. It's not common to see a criminal investigation, particularly one categorized the way that this is, is alerting. And it's surprising based on the public information that is provided. So SIM is a classification that means it's a sensitive investigative matter. Because it's sensitive, it could be a political figure, it could be uh, a news media organization. Who makes the classification that we're news media? It would usually be identified as by the case agents who are working it, and it's also done in conjunction with the chief division counsel of that field office, who's gonna be the top internal lawyer. That title would normally be the name of the subject, the name of the victim, the name of the type of crime that is being alleged, if you know, if these things exist. In this case, it's restricted because uh, even the name of the subject would indicate the nature of what was going on. CAST is an internal program in the FBI that uses sophisticated techniques to exploit cell phone data for location and for content. Going down to Sentinel tags. This was chosen by the people who opened up this case. They had to specifically list the threat tags that they wanted to identify. The intelligence investigation is meant for information. That doesn't require that you've done anything wrong. 
the dialogue. That's the governing dynamic for the FBI. One paragraph justification for spying on anyone? It's one of the few parts of the entire public document that you see that will be redacted. It's truly an incredible amount of power if used wrong. Well, what do you hope comes from your endeavor to be here and, and say all this? I would hope that we could end up with a nonpartisan law enforcement agency in this country that's not doing things that seem to be inappropriate. Just you doing the job that you're told following those orders is to maintain your paycheck and your pension that gives you the Holocaust. So then you end up with somebody who's willing to do something that maybe compromises their ethics. So uh, that's the whistleblower from inside the FBI. That's astounding because if people understand what's happening there, the CAS system, by the way, which is that cellular analysis, people always don't quite understand that when they get your data, what they can do with it. And that system is is fairly intensive in terms of what it can do with your cell phone triangulation, with the numbers, with the uh, cross-referencing uh, of other people and their locations, and then uh, the, the kinds of depths of analysis they can do. I mean, that's a scary, scary um, set of things that he's just alleged that is public. And you'll remember, Adam, when we did that interview with the, him and then the follow-up uh, the, and when we talked to Harvey, um, there is a active case going on in the Southern District of New York. And they were telling magistrates basically one thing. And apparently the government was not letting on that they had already seized all kinds of stuff by virtue of going. I forget to which entity it was, but the entity, one of the large tech companies. Microsoft. Finally, Microsoft. Yeah, Microsoft. Was it Microsoft who filed the motion objecting? Because whoever it was, that general counsel deserves some kudos for saying we're not going to we're not going to play ball anymore. Yeah, we can't keep lying on the government's behalf. So, um, you know, they broke into James O'Keefe's apartment. The you know early morning raid took all his cell phones and computers and handcuffed him and everything else. Um, what motivated this is that he had Hunter Biden's daughter's diary, allegedly, and that was this story. Gary just gave me a look. I thought it, it was Joe's daughter. Oh, I said Hunter. Yeah. Oh, I screwed that up. Joe, yeah, thank it was, you. It was Joe bad. Biden's yeah. daughter uh, had a diary that had some salacious stuff in it. Uh, James O'Keefe was in possession of it, but he never published it, and he couldn't verify it, so he never published it. And they wanted the diary back, I guess. But the notion that you take the Department of Justice and the FBI and use the president, say, I want my daughter's diary back. Go after that journalist who may have it and go scare the shit out of him and go get that diary back. That's a little Orwellian and a little bit scary. And I know Anderson Cooper doesn't care about it as a journalist. But he probably should. Well, you would you would wonder that people on my side of the aisle, as we're screaming about, you know, there's daily updates as to whether Trump has been indicted yet, or whether people around him have been indicted yet. Well, I, I have to wonder why is it that there is appears to be full throttle activity when it's directed at one side, but not the other side. I don't get how they're picking and choosing these things because it's a scary, scary world where if this FBI whistleblower is correct, that there are decisions that are being made to violate the Fourth Amendment, the sanctity of the Fourth Amendment, based on political considerations. That's a scare. You know, that's a line that uh, you want to talk about authoritarianism. That's it. Well, we can uh, maybe in a, another episode get into Durham and the Steele dossier and where he's going with all that, because that seems like a pretty clear cut case of this as well. First, I'll tell you about Geico. Like to save a little money on your insurance? Of course you would. And who doesn't want a deal? So when it comes to great rates on insurance for everything, Geico can help insurance for cars and trucks, motorcycles, boats, RVs, even homeowners, condo and renters coverage as well. And you can save more with special discounts when you bundle. Plus, add the easy-to-use Geico mobile app and save any, even more and get your 24-hour roadside assistance 
well, when you switch to Geico, switch today. See just how much you could save. Simply go to geico.com and uh, you can get a rate and a quote from a local agent. So uh, where's Harmeet with that case? Uh, do you know? And um, I know. <clears throat> I know. We'll have an update. That, yeah, I think we'll have an update next week. I'll give you. I'll give you the the latest on that. I was. You had mentioned the Durham investigation. There's been some activity with that in the last couple of days. Gary, do you have? I think the last court order where uh, emails were ordered to be disclosed. This is a case that is not getting a whole lot of attention, but is on the front burner in Washington D.C. Yeah, my understanding is that a judge ruled that 16 emails that that Durham had been requesting were uh, protected by attorney-client privilege and attorney work product, but the remaining 22 were not. So those are going to be turned over to Durham. But the judge also ruled that those emails will not be admissible in the impending trial of Sussman, who is charged with lying to the FBI during a September 2016 meeting because of the untimeliness of Durham's request. So now when you say not getting a lot of traction... Anderson Cooper, since he seems to be the theme of today's show, is put in the unenviable position of three years of cheering on the Steele dossier and Mueller and the investigation and Russian collusion. Then, you know, the New York Times wins Pulitzer Prizes for their coverage of that. And now Durham is going to undo all of that. So how much does Anderson Cooper want to sit at the news desk and get into what Durham's doing? Because what Durham is doing is saying he's essentially been wrong for the last three years or two years ago, plus three years. He did a, you know, three years worth of top of the news. And uh, your buddy, Adam Schiff was in the uh, front and center for all that comes out every, every night saying there's a new, we're going to blow the lid off this thing. There's a new piece of evidence in the steel dossier and Russian collusion, and everything. And now that entire case is falling apart. It already fell apart. This is part two, which is it's one thing to just have it fall apart. It's another thing to now find out who was behind it, who was pushing it, who was getting paid to do this. And this is going to be more trouble for the FBI. Well, it's a, you're not kidding, but you know why? Um, and it kind of segues into our last uh, topic of the day. Instead of covering that, which you would appear, I, I would think you would want to if you're covering legal issues. I mean, I you can turn on any of the cable news channels that, that I normally watch. You won't see a thing about it. Uh, instead of that, what you will see, Gary, do you have the... Uh, testimony from here. Here we go. This is what you get. This is cotton candy for your brain. Miss yes. heard a text that says, thank you for your letter. I love you. Yes. Scroll down. Right. She writes, thank you for mine. Did I read that right? You did. And then you write, the only reason we go for the throat is love. Did I read that right? You did. And then she writes, my throat is yours. You're going to be the death of me, but I don't care. And then you write, I have other uses for your throat, which do not include injury. I have other uses for your throat, which do not include injury. Wait for it. Sorry, could you read that again? (laughs) Do your words, sir, right? I read that right, correct? You did. Okay. You can take that down. <laughs> I just, By the way. Yes. I'll, I'll tell you what purpose this whole trial is going to serve, which is yes, so. I'm just going to whack together sort of best of hits, you know, that last about nine minutes from the trial. And uh, the day Sonny comes home and announces he's in love and he's met the woman he wants to marry, I'm just going to sit him down and go, this is how it's going to turn out. This is where it's well, going. See, that's the difference between you and me, because you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take that tape. <laughs> and when I'm prepping people, you know, we've used the Jerry Lewis tape for sure. depositions. Yeah. This is, I'm going to uh, kind of segue into this. When the guy asks you something and it's contrived for the second time, I'm going to have, I'm going to tell the witness, ask him to read it the third time because it'll point out to the jurors what is actually going on here. That was a good move by Johnny. I give him, I give him kudos for that. 
Well, this is, you know, it was kind of funny because, you know, CNN and Anderson Cooper, they didn't want to cover a lot of what was going on with Hunter Biden or Project Veritas or uh, Steele dossier stuff. But uh, Ukraine popped up at just the right time and they sort of were able to go all in on that. And then that was basically followed by the Amber Heard Johnny Depp trial so they could put all their eggs in that basket. When is this thing going to wind up and what are your predictions? Well, I think it's going to wind up in the next three weeks. And that's what the judges said. They took the past week off. My prediction is that they, uh, depending on what I've been told about the composition of the jur- jury, which is predominantly young males, that it, it's interesting to see whether those young males are going to identify more with Amber Heard or with Johnny Depp. I tend to think just from the cheap seats where I am that that's, that leads towards Amber Heard. And just once again, why is, you know, these trials like Derek Chauvin, Officer Derek Chauvin, why do these trials seem to be 11 days and these things seem to be the never ending story? I mean, you say three weeks, we're five weeks in already. What I I don't I can't figure out why we need seven times as much time to decide the fate of millionaires versus deciding the fate of somebody spending the rest of their life in prison or possibly going to the electric chair. It's one of the conundrums of the justice system with why I always say it's irretrievably broken. Criminal cases by statute and constitutional authority have a absolute prior priority over civil cases where you're fighting over other people's money, you're fighting over liberty versus money. Yet, Criminal cases, I can't tell you, judges run roughshod over a criminal case. You've got the amount of time that you can cross, the amount of time we're going to keep a jury waiting. We got, you know, we got to keep these trains running on time. For some reason, all of that goes out the door when they, when you're fighting over other people's money in the civil courthouse, and they just go on interminably. It's not just the high profile cases. Go over to the civil courthouse, which is across the street from the criminal courts building, in uh, L.A., and you'll see the same phenomena. I don't know why it is, other than once judges get out of doing criminal duty and go over to civil, they don't feel like people are paying attention. I don't know what the explanation is. All right, Mark, I know you got a hard out, so I'll let you uh, hard out, yeah, Mark hard out, Garagas. Thank you. It's I appreciate it. hard out with Mark Garagas. I'll hit uh, <laughs> Mac Weldon. Oh, it's heating up that out there. And when it comes to stylish essentials for hotter days ahead, there's no better option than Mac Weldon. From uh, hanging at home to a much-needed vacation, their daily wear system, well, it takes the guesswork out of getting dressed, even for the most indecisive guys. Lightweight silver piquet polos and soft Pima T-shirt polos. <clears throat> These things are the greatest, man. Especially the T-shirts, they're just I, they, they, the 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 competition pales in comparison. Um, now they also have the uh, Maverick Tech Chino short and the Radius Flex short. Two other must-haves for uh, the beach or pool season: board shorts and swim trunks. A combo of performance, stretch, and uh, slick design. Great gear for taking time off it's mac weldon right gary that's right i'm wearing mine right now check out mac weldon for yourself and save 20 percent on your first order visit mac weldon.com slash doubt and enter promo code doubt again that's m-a-c-k-w-e-l-d-o-n.com slash d-o-u-b-t and enter promo code doubt for 20 percent off stock up on the warm weather essentials you've been missing uh, you can see us doing a live pod in huntington beach from uh, sea legs that's uh, coming up May 20th, a week from tonight. And uh, you can go to amcroll.com because we're going to uh, Denver coming up, Springfield, Missouri. Uh, just go to amcroll.com for all the live shows. And you can uh, pre-order my uh, new book, Everything Reminds Me of Something. That's out July 19th. But pre-order it now. Just go to the banner at adamcroll.com. And until next time, it's Adam Kroll for Mark Hardout Garago saying mahalo. Thanks for listening to Reasonable Doubt. Tune in next Saturday for an all-new episode.